Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are going to go over all of the week two fantasy hockey event content. We're going to talk about all the new master sets, how much each of these are going to go for, and are they worth it? Week one was extremely rough. I'll be honest. Week two, much better. All right, let's get into it. Now, while I do say much better than week one, it is still a ridiculous cost and investment, especially early on in the game, for some of these cards. But first things first, I think we should just take a look at all of the new cards for week two. All right, so let's start down at the bottom with the 70 overall Kale McCallum from the four years in the QMJHL. Now, like week one, Pavel Minchikov from the OHL um, Saginaw Spirit, I mentioned that they're kind of a decent buy or decent investment just because their potential to score is very, very high because they they play obviously major junior and these kind of prospects are a lot more uh, focal points in their league specifically now kale last year had 19 goals as a defenseman which means that they goes up by plus two for every goal that he scores so he really needs to get 15 he's already at six so he needs another 15 on top of that so he's got to have a career year to get to 99 now he does have thief which helps us defense a little bit here's the issue guys is that the thing that is going to hammer down on the value of these is that if they're using now because the quicker that they're usable the more sought after they're going to be they're they're going to add have more added benefit to you uh we'll talk about this when the, we get to the master sets but if a card is usable now on top of the ability to go up to 99 that's a huge bonus kale mccallum he's got to have a career year and there's no reason to think that he won't but even at 99 he's a 511 183 defenseman it'll happen near the end of the year which means that there's team of the year guys that you're going to be able to go out and get as well uh and and it's just going to take a lot longer for him to get useful 72 defensive awareness with thief activated i mean he is gonna need at least 10 goals before you can think about making you know that usable so this would be a pass for me i would sell him immediately next we've got the 73 overall from the moose jaw warriors the brayden jaeger six foot 161 with dangle city and snipe now last season he had 34 goals he is one of the most highly sought after prospects in the whl and really in the entire nhl but he's got to score 27 more goals on top of that there's really no reason to think that he won't do that usually again because in these lower leagues these guys are the focal points of their entire teams he's definitely going to put up another 27 goals like he's going to get to 99 and when you think about that like what are we comparing to it'll happen later in the year he's six foot 161 that's marner and panarin and i've talked about this they just get bumped off the puck so easily snipe is not that great of an ability now once they get to 95 i believe they will get another ability unlocked but it's still going to be quite some time before he is usable like a forward unlike a defenseman goes up by one over overall speed is by 0.5 okay so if he gets another 10 goals he's an 86 overall player just not enough value here in my opinion i would sell then we've got the 82 overall theodore lenstrom from the swedish hockey league then we've got the 82 overall theodore lenstrom from the shl he is already 82 overall has protector which is a good synergy that doesn't involve any skating and he's 88 speed 87 acceleration with 88 agility already that's a usable card like you can get away with having him even at 82 overall in your lineup and you're not really crushed okay even with a god squad you could have him on your third pairing and that's fine he's 6'1 190 which is good size already has seven goals in 14 games like he's already set his career high in goals essentially in this league i don't know how much more he's gonna score um he's got seven goals in 14 games last year he had three and 11 uh as in in, in 2021 he had four and 18 it's just very tough to you know wager how well he's gonna do however his skating is pretty usable i still lean to selling him i just don't know how much better he's gonna get is all next we've got the 84 overall simon moser six foot two left-handed winger that does play in the national league the highest league in for swiss i believe 85 speed 85 acceleration with 86 agility which is very mid-tier um now the career high in goals is 17 in this league sorry 18 that was 10 years ago last year he had 10 goals and four 48 games he is 8 and 19 so he's off to a very good start here but uh, again if he gets 10 more goals we're looking at 90 speed and acceleration and that would kind of be his career high so i don't know i wouldn't risk it guys again big tipper is might be a fun ability but it's not a game changer he does have good size though it's a very interesting one i think that if you got him for 200k 
because I don't think a lot of people are going to be interested in him. 200, 250K, if you're hut rich, it could be an okay investment, but in all honesty, I would just avoid so I don't have to worry about it. William Nylander is up next, and like I said, they definitely had some more sought-after players added in week two, which helped save this event a little bit. He does have elite edges, which is also huge because that's one of the best superstar abilities in the game. He's got four goals in 11 games at the time of this recording. Last year, he had 34 in a full season. He's had 31 and 68 before, so he is almost a lock for 30 goals, and he's already got four, so again, getting to 99, pretty safe bet barring injury which is another thing that you've got to be concerned about guys if they get injured for any period of time there's no guarantee that ea is going to give a kind of make right set where you can trade him in 83 speed and 83 acceleration is not really playable for a winger right now i mean even on top of that he's got 75 shooting he's going to essentially need at least five more before he's playable. And because of his defensive awareness, body checking and stick checking being so low, he's a really big liability. So he really needs like 10 more goals um, where he would have, you know, mid 80 shooting, 88 speed and acceleration, which is playable. And how much longer is it gonna take for him to get 10 more goals? We're looking at maybe into the end of December. Um, however, he is probably one that will hold his value the longest because there's so many Leafs fans that play this game. Uh, definitely one of the more interesting and fun ones to get. Next, we've got Brayden Point, 78 overall, 5'10 centerman, has quick draw, which is a huge bonus because that is such a sought-after ability. He's got five goals and 11 points in 11 games. He's having a great season so far. I obviously don't think he's going to have a 40-goal year because, well, I mean, he has had one in the past in 2018, 2019, and 41. But the last few years, he's kind of been in that 20 range because he's always hurt. So uh, that is kind of worrisome. For him to be usable, man, his balance is really low. And you compound that with the fact that he's not body-checking anyone off the puck um his face-off rating is really low like he needs another 10 goals before and that's it he'd be a 88 overall another 10 goals before he kind of is usable in the sense that um you know he doesn't have any extreme deficiencies but even at center with that 74 face-off rating it's tough even with quick draw so again i don't know on this one i would rather sell than, than bank on him just because he gets injured so often so uh, that one's up to you guys. Then we've got the 70 overall, Sergei Bobrovsky. This is an instant sell for me. I mean, I just watched him almost squander a game against the Sharks last night. It's had an awful season statistically, but it just matters on wins, um, which obviously Florida is going to get a lot. That being said, guys, there's no point in having this much value tied up in a goaltender that maybe gets to 99. Uh, I would sell immediately. Then we've got the 83 Moritz Sider. So last year, he got a prospect card. This year, he gets a big boy version. He's 6 foot 4, 205. This is almost usable like he does not have a goal yet this season uh he had seven last year so i don't know he had 50 points however so it's not like he is not offensive i just don't know how many goals he's gonna get he doesn't have one this season in 10 games he's actually having a rough season so far he's got two points in 10 games that's the issue with defensemen their goals are few and far between um and it's tough with one goal he is gonna get up to 85 if he gets three or four we're looking at 88 overall and he's six foot four this is a safe one i think like if you're not gonna get a master set player which cost it a ton. I wouldn't spend more than 500k on Moritz Sider, and even then, I probably would not spend that much, but he is going to go for a lot because he has the potential to be absolutely huge. He essentially needs, we're looking at about, you know, 15 points, so he would look at seven or eight goals, um, which is pretty safe, but we don't know. I mean, there's just not enough of a sample size of Moritz Sider. I think that he will hit 99, and if he does, he's one of the best defensemen in the game. That's what you're paying for. You're paying for the hope, but uh, he is usable in a couple goals. So, you know, like I said, 500K is where I would draw the line, but very, very good card. Jake DeBrusque is up next. Last year, he had 25 goals. He's had 27 in the season before, so around 20 is probably easily bankable, which would get him to 99. He's got four goals in in 10 games already so he needs another 20 on top of that which again is kind of in line right around there he's got gladiator which is nice it helps out with the lack of uh, body checking uh that he's got he's very slow however and because again he's a forward he's gonna need two goals to guarantee one speed to move up so we're looking at about five to ten more goals maybe seven if we're being honest before he's kind of usable on your team uh because he just doesn't offer enough right now like he's very slow and um but isn't big enough to kind of make up for it so i'm not a fan but i can see Bruins fans this is a, this is a card that is statted perfectly for 99 which does not have a lot of benefit because there'll be other 99s available at that time of the year dylan strome is up next six foot three 201 centerman for the washington capitals with the backstrom injury he has been thrust into a top six role he's only got two goals but he's got seven points in that sorry nine points he's got two goals 
nine points in the first 12 games of the season he is going to get a lot of offensive opportunities and he's almost usable like he's very close he's got 85 speed and acceleration mid 80 shot uh and he's big which is an added bonus i'm not a huge fan of tape to tape but with like four or five more goals he's going to be in that you know high 80 speed and high 80 shot which is usable and again once his face-off rating creeps over 80 you're pretty safe and he's so big this is actually a nice card to have again it's going to depend on how much he costs i wouldn't want to go anything more than 500k and again 500 is so much but i feel like it would be pretty safe for him to get to 99 just because of the opportunity he's got he hit 22 goals last year in 69 game with the blackhawks and obviously the caps are a better team next is noah dobson from the new york islanders he's six foot four 195 great size for a defenseman obviously in this game 83 overall he's got three goals in 11 games so far last year was his career high at 13 and that's an outlier right now because in his first two years he had four combined so there's no guarantee that he's going to get up to you know 10 plus however he is on pace for what he had last year which uh which is fine he's already 83 overall with you know five more goals which is quite a bit for a defenseman he's at 90 speed and acceleration five more is tough to wager when that's going to be but he's already got such good size and good defensive awareness with protector activated that you can put him in your lineup so if you had him in a choice pack this is a pretty safe one then we've got the 84 rasmus Dahlin. this is the uh, crown jewel of this release last year he had 13 goals which is career high in 80 games he's got six and ten already which is why you see him at 84 overall six foot three two oh six Seven, great size already 85 speed and acceleration good defensive awareness he's big even though his body checking stat is low uh kind of makes up for that this is the best one out of all of these because buffalo looks like a wagon and darling might be a 20 goal scorer he is the closest thing to duchene that we have this year because he is doing what ea did not expect and that score a lot early on Buffalo is scoring a ton of goals this year. Dahlin's a massive part of their offense. Power play time, all of that. First line minutes has all the opportunity to score a lot of goals. Like if he can get 10 more goals, he's at 95 speed and 96 acceleration. So uh, I'm I the, the chance to get to 99, huge. This is the one that I would want out of all these cards. Now let's talk about the master set players. And again, I think that this release did save uh, the event from being a complete disaster. Now Pavelski, not a very good hut card. Great player in real life he's got five goals and 10 points in 11 games he looks like he's going to be on pace to hit his normal 25 to 30 goals that he's had pretty much his whole career however he starts out so low that he needs a lot of goals before he becomes usable like he if even with five more goals to 10 at 10 he's going to be an 87 overall skater and that's with synergies activated he's only five foot 11 which is hard to justify using someone that slow and that small because his body checking stat is so low and on top of that there's no data that actually shows big tipper and total eclipse being viable x factor abilities tips this year are awesome but there's no way to see that these abilities increase the ability to tip that much higher uh he is gonna hit 99 barring injury but even at 99 he's not a fantastic option at 99 so you have to really think this out because it's gonna cost you about 800 000 coins right now to make one of these damon severson is up next from the new jersey devils and he has hit double digit goals twice uh in his career so far a last year he had 11 in 80 games the new jersey devils are a much better team but this is a very scary one because again he is going to need 10 more goals which is his career high essentially um to get to 99 he's got great size but his skating starts out so low that he needs a couple goals before he's usable and that might not happen until january um this is way too high of a risk for me unless you're a devil's fan i'm avoiding this one all right now let's talk about the two viable options to make in this release and one is going to be the 84 overall cam fowler here is the only issue with Cam Fowler. One, rarely ever stays healthy. I mean, he has had over 80 games twice in his now 10-year, oh, 12-year career, okay? Last year, he played 76. The three years before that, he didn't hit 60. He has had 11 or double-digit goals twice in his career. One was his rookie season, and the last time he did it was 16-17. Last year, he had nine goals in 76 games, so it's not outside the realm of possibility. He only needs to hit eight more to get to 99, but he the, the thing is, he is very usable right now. The combination of synergies makes this card one of the best left-handed defensemen in the game right now. 90 speed, 87 acceleration, 89 defensive awareness with synergies activated, body checking 82, but he's 6'2", 214. There is no guarantee he's going to score because he's not traditionally been a great scorer in the NHL. However, even if he doesn't, you can keep him on your team, even on the third pairing, for months. 
So if you are in need of a defenseman and you like the Anaheim Ducks or you want to be interested in this event and you really want the defenseman, this would be the option because again, he's playable now and for the future. But the real big one is the 80 overall Tim Stutzla. By far the most exciting of all of the Master Set players for this event. We finally have one that is extremely sought after because of the, the player himself. It's not, you know, a random defenseman or middle tier forward. We've got Tim Stutzla, former Shark, uh, 58 points last year, had 22 goals, which was 10 higher than his prior year in his rookie season. He's got three and 10 games already. Um, so there, he looks like he's on his way to another for to a 20 goal season, which would get him the 99. Thief makes him viable right now. Okay, you are going to be able to play him at center, but elite edges kind of sets him above. 86 speed and acceleration is not great, but it is passable right now. Like you can get away with having. Having that on your lower lines and again with a few more goals let's say you know five to maybe six that'll get him up to 89 speed and almost 90 and six goals could happen very quickly for tim stutzler so i think that this is the one if you are looking to make one there is risk involved i think fowler is the safest but tim stutzler is the most fun it is what this event should be about it'll have you watching ottawa senator games this is the one i would make if you're dead set on making one of these evo ones because i think that again he just checks off all the boxes what this event should be about an exciting player good card good ability Tim Stutz. All right, now let's talk about the cost because these things are uh, these things are pretty brutal. Okay, we have got to talk about how you create these. It is not really changed from last week, so let's just discuss the massive cost involved. Now, for the sets that are in here, okay, I'm going to touch on them quickly. You've got the 10 event collectibles for a choice pack, one of two of the week two prospect items. I'll talk about the prospects in a separate video because I want to go over them. There's a choice pack to them, uh, which I'm going to touch on as well because there's a nice little cheat that you can do with that. But I will talk about that in a separate video that I'll release either tonight or tomorrow. Then you have 30 for a random choice fantasy hockey season set for week two. Now, there is 12 options in this pool that you can pull. All right, it's one of three. Rasmus Dahlin is one of them. The issue is, if you spend 30 collectibles, guys, right now, collectibles are going for about 20,000 per. 20,000 per. That is 600,000 coins to make this set. If you do not pull Rasmus Dahlin, Moritz Sider, Dylan Strom, Nylander, and maybe Dobson and Point would be on the lower end, you are in a real rough shape. Like, if you get any of the CHLers, the European players, like, or Bobrovsky, DeBrusque even is kind of mediocre, that's a really tough pill to swallow because for an extra 200000 you can guarantee yourself one of these. So you can get Camp Fowler or Tim Stutzla, whatever one you decide, I would not get Pavelski or Severson, if you're asking for my opinion. Always make your favorite players, though, guys, but I just wouldn't invest in them. Um, so th that is that is an awfully tough big pill to swallow. I am never going to recommend you guys gamble, um, fully gamble, especially players that don't spend any money on this game. If you're no money spent, guys, this is not the event for you, unless you've been preparing for it since launch. Uh, if you are no money spent, I think Cam Fowler is the one to go with, because if all things, um, you know, kind of hit the fan with Stutzla, maybe he doesn't break out, maybe, you know, it takes longer to get there, uh, he gets hurt, you're in real rough shape. Fowler, however, is usable, and you could use him pretty much all season long. So, uh, I think that if you're no money spent, Fowler is the play. If you really want to take in full event of what this or full value of what this event is supposed to be about i'd recommend stutzla the packs i'll talk about what to do with those in the few, as well but if you are going to do this choice set here is what i would recommend you can open up the pack and dashboard meaning that you can if you're on xbox dashboard close out your game and relaunch it same thing with playstation if you do that and you don't make a selection the pack is still there it doesn't change the contents of it okay but you can dashboard out of it which means that you can make this pack in the next six or seven days until the event is done and hold it until, you know, Jan well, however long, okay? So you know that you are at least... If one of the kids in the CHL, let's say you don't get any of the good players, you can play it safe and know that you're going to get this player and he's going to be much higher rated. Okay, so there is a lot of value in that. Um, but again, you're still risking. It's a lot of value and you're basically not getting a usable player at all. So that's all going to be dependent upon your situation if you want to do it. If you are going to make one of these, Fowler or Stutzla, wait until the very last minute, guys. Fowler can make your lineup and be pretty impactful. But let's say he gets hurt or maybe Stutzla goes off and gets a hat trick or maybe seven goals in the next five days okay then you obviously want to make stutzla or even pavelski or severson maybe they blow up make sure that you are not making these sets or doing these cards until the very end of the event 
because you want to make sure that you are getting the accurate one. Now, for the event collectibles and which ones have the best value, I don't really want to touch on this because every time I say, hey, 83s are the best value, once this video comes out, they're not going to be. I'll be honest with you, that's what that's just what's going to happen. The 87s, these are not going to have the most value unless they're under 40,000 coins because the 6, the 86s, they seem to be going for about 20,000. They're sitting right around there. That's where I would probably point your value if you're going to buy them to make it up. Uh, you know, that could be a play. If you're no money spent, or even if you are pay to play and you don't have a huge interest, sell everything, guys. Like, sell everything, especially if you hold it until Monday, Tuesday. People start getting a little more desperate. They really want their cards. You can make a ton of coins because people are going to be more interested in this event now that Stutzla and Fowler and, and, and Darlene are in the actual pool player pool to be made or pulled if you're Darlene. So be aware of that because it is, you know, it, it is a good chance to make some money. Also, let's talk about the free cards. If you are going to make one of these, make sure that you get all of the free collectibles. So by doing all these fantasy hockey challenges, uh, you can get the fantasy hockey collectible. So that's one. You can also get the fantasy hockey prospect choice pack. I will discuss in another video which one I think you should choose. Uh, but you can also get some event collectibles in the daily challenges. So make sure if you're going to make one of these, save yourself 20,000 per. You can make four in total as there's two in group one and two. So there's two, two in total here. There's one in that fantasy hockey objective and then there's one in hut rush, meaning that you can save yourself 80,000 coins in value if you are going to make one of these. So I uh, just want to touch on all that. Guys, that is going to do it for the event details for week two of the fantasy hockey event. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Again, do not rush out and make any of these. You've got a week to do it and you can see if any of these guys blow up before then. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.